Um, a couple of uh, days ago, someone told me, try not to annoy people too much with your talk. So challenge accepted, we'll try to do something nice. So, want to talk about SaaS, uh, but I don't want to bring another introduction. We have way too many of them, uh, too many articles, blog posts, screencasts and everything. So uh, today I would like to present you some do's and don'ts of uh, writing SaaS code. Um, a couple of years ago, Jonathan Snook presented a talk called Your CSS is a Mess. Great talk, by the way. And um, I think um, the your is optional. Um, the line is quite thin, but uh, the your is actually strike through. So CSS is kind of a mess at a, um, at a whole level. So it's not that it's been broken from the start. It's, it's not that CSS is poorly designed. It's just that it wasn't meant to do such complicated stuff. Um, when it was designed 20 years ago, CSS was meant to style basic text documents like uh, reports or, or letters or whatever. Um, <clears throat> today, we want CSS to be able to do like um, fully fluid free columns layouts with responsive images. It's, it's just crazy. And, and this is why we need tools to help us um, kind of bridge the gap between um, the legacy we have to support and, and new challenges. So um, SAS is one of its tools. It has been for seven years now. Great tool, really. Um, it does a lot of stuff. It, it, it solves a lot of problems. Um, but it's, I feel like I have to um, kind of warn you because it's, it's not all bright and shiny. Uh, SAS not only solves for them, but it also creates a lot of them. Um, For many designers, many developers, CSS wasn't meant to be written um, with such complicated structures like loops, functions, mix-ins. It was um, a simple declarative language, and now it's uh, close to programming. So for many de designers and developers, SAS is just scary code. It's just too complex, just uh, unmaintainable. Look the irony, right? Um, so my first advice today would be try not to overthink things too much. Um, it's very tempting with such a powerful tool as SAS to um, do a lot with it. Harry told us um, a couple of hours ago how uh, we shouldn't build something that wasn't um, asked for. So my first, um, first advice would be try not to uh, overthink things. If you need something to do A, make it do A, not the whole alphabet. Um, you know the, you know the, the KISS principle? Um, keep it simple, stupid. I, I tweaked it to apply it to SAS. Um, keep your SAS simple, it's, it's a fairly popular article on SidePoint. And you could add another S. Um, keep your SAS simple and straightforward. And you could add another S. Keep your SAS simple, smart, and straightforward. And you could add another S, but you get the idea. So my second advice would be write simple APIs. Whenever you build a library, a mixing um, framework, a grid system, whatever, you are building some code that other developers will use, your team, for instance. And <clears throat> this is your API. This is what you build. This is what you provide for other developers. Um, try to build simple stuff. Um, this, whatever it is, is not simple. This is probably very clever. It does a lot of stuff, but it's not simple. Underscore 10, 8, 6, 4, alpha, omega, omega, default is not simple. <laughs> it's like some kind of military code. Uh, so. This is not the kind of thing you should build. Um, on, the other, on the other hand, this is plain English. You could bring this to anybody with absolutely no tech background. It, it could almost tell you what's going on here. It's, it's simple, it's easy, it makes sense. So let me skip this and skip this here. Um, 
please stop nesting too much. I, I, I can't count the number of articles nesting things five level deep. It's, it's a mess to understand, it's a mess to read, it's a mess to debug. So please beware of selector nesting. It's a powerful feature when it's not abused. So try not to nest things too much, please. And my second advice would be not to do everything in SAS. Uh, again, it's very tempting because SAS is a very powerful tool. Jeff Atwood, a couple of years ago, told um, any application that could be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. And, and God, he was right. Uh, I think we could apply it to SAS. So any application that could be written in SAS will eventually be written in SAS, and probably by me, right? So uh, trust me, we can, we can do very silly stuff uh, for experimental purpose. Um, for instance, this. This is a JSON parser written in SAS, no Ruby. Or uh, this, this is a sorting algorithm written in SAS, still no Ruby. Or this, this is bitwise operation written in SAS, no Ruby. So trust me, we can do a lot of stuff that shouldn't be done. Uh, so <laughs> if you ever come up with something that crazy, just keep it on very experimental level and never ever try to bring it in a live project. It's, it's a bad idea. So something shouldn't be done in SAS, obviously. <clears throat> For instance, vendor prefixing. Vendor prefixing is probably something you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't do in SAS. Um, because it's probably better to keep it with auto-prefixer. Uh, I think you almost all know the prefixer. It's a post-processing tool. So you use it when you uh, want to auto-prefix all your CSS properties according to a configuration file. So uh, obviously this is much better than doing it in SAS because you don't um, bloat your style sheets with some um, conditional stuff that are likely to be gone in like two years, five years, 10 years. This is less code, this is easier to maintain. So um, this is probably not a good idea to use SAS to run the prefix. Uh, it's the same for REM. I don't know if you can light up the room. That's cool. <laughs> Thanks guys. So um, how many of you are using uh, SAS to RAM uh, your phone size and everything? Okay. Okay, quite a, quite a couple of you. Okay, so um, don't be ashamed. It's, it's not, there is no permission or anything. Uh, so for RAMing, you, you better use uh, some kind of post-processing tool. Uh, PX to, to RAM is, is a great one. Um, again, it's, it's much less code in your code base. It's easier to maintain. It's, it has a configuration file. It, it doesn't use some kind of old hack with SAS variables. Um, and as a, <clears throat> as a proof um, here, uh, Kelly, <coughs> who spoke a couple of, uh, of hours ago, sorry, um, removed 3,000 lines from the Guardian code base with a single pull request using px 2 ram instead of SAS. So 3,000 lines, it, it's pretty huge. Um, so don't try to do this kind of thing with SAS. It's probably not a good idea. Um, and let's, let's change the subject for a second. Um, not only should some things not be done in SAS, but it, it doesn't, um, simple API and everything doesn't mean your code will be easy to maintain. Uh, you, you still have to write clean code. Um, <coughs> this isn't clean, obviously. Uh, this is clean, or kind of. Um, so <laughs> CSS guidelines, right? Uh, Harry has done um, a massive work with the with his with those guidelines, it's um, absolutely great. Um, try to stick to them, please, please. It it, it would help a lot. Um, try to if if they don't suit your projects very well, try to write your own. But don't go like deep into the wild without some kind of guidelines. It's it's kind of critical. Um, so 
you can use SCSS Lint, which is a great tool if you have a SAS code base and have some guidelines written and you want to uh, have some kind of automated process to make sure your code stick to your guidelines. Uh, it's fully customizable. It's, it's very powerful. So um, yeah, if you use SAS today, you probably should use this tool. Clean code, simple code, and then document it. Um, CSS, as we all know from Daniel talk, is full of hacks and tricks and is kind of um, messy in its own way. Um, when you have some kind of code like this, with hidden overflow and negative margins, random Z indexes, and you don't know what's going on, it means you have to comment it. It, it doesn't take too much time. It's like, what, 20 seconds? And it saves a lot of time. It, it could save like one hour debugging something because some guy come here and, and just remove the overflow hidden because he thinks it, it doesn't belong here and then everything breaks. So try to comment it. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't take much time. It helps a lot and um, everything that is not obvious from the first date could, should be commented. And if you should document your CSS, you probably should document SAS as well. Um, as we said earlier, uh, for many developers and designers, SAS is, is just too complex. It, 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 invo it involves too much things, loops and everything. It's, it's just a mess, extends. Don't, don't get me on extends, anyway. So uh, I built with a couple of friends SAS doc. It's, it's a tool, it's kind of uh, the equivalent of JS doc. So it's to SAS what, uh, what JS doc is to JavaScript and everything. Um, so you, it's, it's a comment annotation system. So you write uh, comments like this, for instance, for uh, size and mixing. You write like, this is my mixing. It takes this and this parameter. This is an example of use. And, and then you compile it and you have some, some beautiful generation, um, sorry, documented, ge generated documentation, sorry. And it comes with a client search, uh, all your mixings, variables, placeholders, function, everything. So uh, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty deep, it's a pretty, pretty cool tool, um, kind of self-promotion here. Uh, so if, if you, anyway, the point is, if you write SAS, especially public API, like you built a framework or a grid system, um, think of this kind of tool. If it's not this one, it's not this one, it doesn't matter. Think of um, documenting your, uh, your code. It's, it's very important. And please test it as much as you can. Uh, either you could use some, some kind of uh, custom tool like this is my, my input, this is my output, and, and then you compile and you make sure the expected outputs match the actual outputs. Uh, this is some kind of uh, easy to do stuff. Um, or you could use a SAS testing framework. There are two of them, True and Bootcamp. Um, True is made by uh, Eric uh, Suzanne, the guy behind uh, Su Suzy Grids. So uh, you can say it's rock solid. Uh, Bootcamp, uh, unfortunately, is, is not maintained anymore. Uh, it's too bad because it, it's, it's really a great, a great tool. Uh, anyway, uh, both are uh, heavily inspired by uh, JavaScript, uh, especially Jasmine. So um, it's a basic assertion system. So you have like, uh, I expect my, func my SAS function uh, with those parameters to, to, do, to return this. Um, so it's, uh, again, if you build some kind of public API with SAS, either for open source or your own team, because it often happens uh, that you are uh, charged to um, build uh, a, a grid system for your own, uh, your own project. If you do this, um, try to uh, run a, te a testing framework like Bootcamp and make sure your function just work, works fine. It's, it, it's, um, it's not a big deal and it, it, it helps a lot. So. Um, so, uh, if we sum up, keep your code simple, keep your SAS simple, don't nest too much. Um, try, um, try to build a um, simple API, clear API with clean code. Um, obviously tested, it's important. Documented as much as you can. There is there's no such thing as too much documentation. It doesn't exist. And uh, everything will be fine, trust me. So, yeah, that's what I got.